After a week in Africa, the time for me has come to take my first Dala Dala. Dala Dala's are local buses here in Tanzania and the experience was, well, interesting. <laughs> Good morning, we're back in Dar es Salaam. We, we as this family, you and I, I am back in Dar es Salaam, the biggest city here in Tanzania. As you know, I just spent three incredible, incredible days in Kilwa, in the south of Tanzania, in one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen, honestly. Like, it was such an incredible trip. Like, I still cannot get over it. Uh, and yeah, now I'm back in Dar for just one night. I'm back at this low, low part, a hostel where I also stayed previously when I just came to Dar es Salaam. So I woke up this morning, did a quick workout, almost died doing that workout because it's very hot here. It's 32 Celsius degrees. Um, and then I just spent the morning uh, editing my video. I am so close to be done with my first Oman vlog, which I'm very excited about because it's probably like one of the best videos, what like one of my favorite videos that I've ever done for sure. So today is actually a very exciting day because I will be traveling by a local bus for the very first time. Those kind of local buses that uh, have no windows and no AC and are usually very crowded. Even though I've been in Africa, in Tanzania for a week now, the only traveling I've done is like here in Dar es Salaam. And then we went to Kilwa with a car. So it's going to be exciting. I am a little... I'm not really scared anymore, you know? I'm just anxious, we'll, we'll see. But I, I, I used to be scared when I first got here. I was actually so afraid to go out in the street and I was afraid to vlog, which to be fair, you should be very careful with your camera here and everything. Uh, pickpocketing is unfortunately a real deal threat here. But right now I am actually going to the slipway, which is a very popular place here in Dar es Salaam. It's like, a shopping mall but it's like a whole area with bars and like restaurants very nice area to hang out it's also a very popular place for foreigners this whole district where we're at right now is called Masati and it's actually the wealthiest or one of the best one of the fanciest districts here in Dar and it's really funny to think about that <laughs> I found it so overwhelming when I first got here and now after traveling to Kilwa and hanging out around different areas of Dar, also downtown, which was... To say that downtown Dar is overwhelming is like... No, it's more. It's like next level. Anyways, what was I even saying? Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I just wanted to say that it's funny how your perception changes with time. Uh, I was so overwhelmed when I got here, but now I'm like... Why was I so overwhelmed? This is actually a very, very nice area. Uh, there's nothing bad happening here. Like, it's really pretty. So many restaurants, so many people on the streets. People don't, they do pay attention to me, but like, I'm, right now I'm talking to myself. So yeah, obviously who wouldn't pay attention to that? But like, not as much. When we were in Kilwa, which is not a touristy part of Tanzania at all, there is basically like no one here. No tourists go there because it's quite far down south. So basically the opposite of like, the main tourist attractions of Tanzania, Zania. Majority of tours go up north uh, to Serengeti, Kilimanjaro, etc. And Kilwa is the other direction. Anyways, that's why there's basically not that many people there. So whenever we would leave our hostel, everyone would look at us. Which I understand because, you know, they don't see many foreigners there. Um, but here, it's certainly not the case. And I actually didn't tell you what I'm doing and why I'm going to slipway. I'm going to the slipway because I've already lost that plug, you know, electricity thing that you need to make your things charge when you have European plug. Hello. Hello. I need to find that thing that I don't even know how you call in English. Not that I know in any other language to be fair. Oh, there it is. You know how you call it? Like, it's called adapter and I'm a proud owner of my second adapter here in Tanzania and now let's go to Bagamoya So the first part of the journey is gonna be Taxi to the bus stop and luckily Bolt and Uber I think as well works here So we're gonna order a Bolt to the bus station, but we have to figure out first What is the bus station? <laughs> I want to order it on Bolt, but I'm not sure 
We were going to Bogomoya. Back to being a camel. My backpack is so heavy, it weighs 16 kilo, which is a little embarrassing because it's way too much. Thank you, bye. So just getting to the bus station here in Dar es Salaam is going to take us about 45 minutes. Dar is a huge, huge, hectic city. The roads are not incredible. Uh, so it takes a while to get from one place to another. And then we need to get a bus which will take us directly to Bagamoyo, which again is not that far, about 70 kilometers from Dar, uh, but it will take about three hours. Okay, so we just got dropped off here and apparently this is our bus. The bus just arrived immediately. Well, I don't think there is any uh, sitting space. So are we gonna casually sit for three hours now? Uh, there is a baby, so we're on the bus. It all happened very quickly. We basically just pulled up. We told the driver that we're going to Bagamoyo. He asked a random person on the street about the bus. And, and then we pulled up and the bus was just here. So I'm not sure what happened. As you can see, the bus is extremely crowded. It's a small local bus though, so there is no space for us to sit, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, only three hours. Only three hours. <laughs> One thing that I really need to add here is do not expect things to always go as smoothly as you saw here. We were basically very lucky because traveling by Dala Dala can be extremely hectic for us foreigners who don't speak the local language and don't know how the things work here. And basically the way things work here is that you just need to do a lot of asking around to find out which bus to take and when the bus is coming. We told our Bajaja driver that we wanted to go to Bogomoyo and he helped us. He did the asking around for us and someone showed him the bus that we needed to take. We would have never figured that out on our own. Most of the time there is no real bus schedule for Dala Dalas and no real station. Um, and if you're lucky, the bus comes. Uh, and if you're not so lucky, you might be waiting for a long time because with the traffic here it's quite unpredictable so we've been driving for an hour i think but i did get a sitting spot my best advice for those of you who want to travel by Dela Dela is don't rush it, give yourself time, don't carry too much stuff on you because there is not much space. Of course, bring change to buy the tickets and you do buy tickets inside Dela Dela. Wear breathable, comfortable clothes because there is no AC, so you do sweat a lot. Um, I don't want to sugarcoat it. Traveling by Dela Dela can be a very intense experience. But at the same time, during my time spent in Africa, I felt like those moments spend in Dala Dallas were actually pretty rare opportunity for me to get a sneak peek of everyday local life here in Tanzania and I do have so much respect for locals who travel like that every day okay so we are leaving the bus it is very hectic I don't know who the I think there are taxi drivers for like did you see that? That was hectic. I don't remember the fighting or what was it? Okay, so I think we got a taxi or budget. We'll still need to figure it out. Oh, so it's an actual car. The last one kilometer we're gonna travel in a luxury. Overall, this whole journey was very affordable. So we paid 6,000 for the tuk-tuk in Dar. Uh, then the bus was 180, and this is gonna be like 1,000 per person, so 2,000 in total. I was the bus driver, and he was like, where are you from? From Holland. And I was silent for a while, and then he said, oh, Holland people have white hair. <laughs> How did you figure that out? <laughs> We made it. This is the name of the place where we're staying. We just realized that the whole journey took us like two hours and not three as it was supposed to. So it was not bad at all. I mean, bad at all. It was adventurous for sure. Is it that way? Oh, 
that looks nice. So we made it to the hostel. It's called Firefly. And we got a little welcome drink. Overall, the vibe seems to be very chill. We have a pool and we're also very close to the ocean. I'm gonna drink water from a jar here now. So I just ordered some food and as I am waiting for my food to arrive, let me share with you a couple of quick thoughts that I have after this first local bus ride. Overall, it was a very positive experience. Of course, it is challenging to be squeezed in a bus with so many people. Um, it can be a bit overwhelming the first time you do it and I can imagine it's not an experience that everyone would want to have, of course. Um, but overall, I am positively surprised. It was better than I expected. As I said, we didn't drive in the bus for that long. It was about two hours. Uh, but as we got on it and it was so crowded and we didn't have a place to sit and we had to, you know, stand there and I got a bit overwhelmed at first and I was like, oh my god, can I actually do it for three hours? But then later as like, you know, I got used to it and like kind of calmed myself down a little bit because, you know, the thing is like I put myself in the situation. No one told me to come to Africa and ride public buses. Uh, but as I calmed down, it was, oh my god, there's an like, animal, an ant. Also, navigating the whole system was surprisingly easy, but like what Saskia and I, we both said, it was that we were kind of just like pushed in the right directions. It felt like we literally didn't do anything, we just ordered the tuk-tuk, and then our, we to told our driver where we're going, and he kind of like found the bus for us, and we just got on the bus and got out but that was pretty much it so overall easy but of course we didn't have to change buses we like literally didn't do anything ourselves so overall no i said overall 100 times overall great oh my God, look at the doggy living its best life partly i still feel like it's so surreal that i'm here and the experience of riding the local bus kind of felt like a movie for me, you know? I really felt like I was in one of these movies about Africa that you watch. Um, you know, all these people cramped in this tiny space and, you know, the beautiful landscape and the hectic markets and women in their beautiful, colorful dresses. I'm very happy that I get to experience things like this, for sure. Bagamoyo actually has a very interesting, both sad and interesting past. It's a very historical place. It's actually considered to be the oldest town in Tanzania. I will definitely tell you more about the history of this place um, because it's for sure very interesting in tomorrow's vlog. But for now, let's just go out and explore my area. I want to see where the ocean is, which I'm assuming it's closed because I think I can hear it. And yeah, just let's, let's see what's, uh, what's around here. This is definitely very different from Kilwa. Uh, it's a very local beach, basically occupied by fishermen and there are boats everywhere and a lot of people are sitting and cleaning their fish and uh, there are some women over there selling fruits. Okay, I think I'm gonna finish the vlog here because it's very windy. I don't, I don't even know if you can hear me. Anyways, great first day of traveling Africa, proper traveling Africa. I'm looking forward to exploring Bagamoyo, so come back to the next vlog if you want to explore it with me. Um, and I will hopefully see you back soon.